Now, if there's one thing that we know about Formula E, is that we don't always know what's going to happen. So if you're a team like EIT, how do you try and predict the unpredictable? Well, you use the simulator and you try and simulate every possible outcome that might happen over the course of a Formula E race weekend. And this is the room where it happens from maximizing that setup, from drivers learning the circuit and perfecting those energy management strategies. But how does it work? Time to find out. One thing that's actually really interesting to think about is that we know Formula E and motorsport to be high intensity, to be all about the action and the drama, but in reality, you have to have moments like this, which are quite quiet, quite subdued, as everybody works really hard, both Dan in the sim and the engineers here, looking at layer after layer of data with incredible patience, while tiny little things get changed lap by lap. But crucially, None of the celebrations, none of the champagne on the podiums or any of that, or even the ability for us to enjoy that intensity happens without this. So what would you say are the main reasons and what are the benefits of using the simulator? The main goal for the simulator is to turn up to the event better prepared. Uh, so it really is three main aspects to it. So the first one being driver familiarization. So number one being the circuits uh, and then secondly, any new control systems that we're bringing to the event, any new systems, any new dashes, so the driver basically is familiar with all those things. What, what about um, the black rotary? What's G demand? The second aspect then is aimed towards push laps and qualifying. So again, aiming from uh, tire warm-up preparation to simple things like timing. So how long does an out lap take, a prep lap, a push lap. Right, so yeah. we'll pre-plan all those sessions in advance. And again, it helps us just turn up the track in, in a better position and more information than we had previously. Uh, and the third main aspect then is, is probably the biggest one is the energy management aspect. So generating uh, as much good information as you can to help us optimize our energy management when we turn up at the events. So Dan, we've just seen you do some sim preparation. Yep. What I'm really keen to know is there's a lot of things that you tried there. Like we had energy management, we had four course yellows, we had attack mode. Yep. For you as a driver, what do you want to get out of a sim session when you leave today? Yeah. What do Very you want simple to really. It's just any eventuality that happens at the track, I just don't want it to be a shock. I just want it to be easy. That's, okay. that's basically um, what I like to get out of sim sessions. It uh, depends if the track's new, obviously if the track's new then learning that's very important. Um, but if I've been to the track a few times, I mean the first couple of hours of the day I might be dialing my driving in but then from then on for the rest of the prep, whether it's one or two days, it's normally mainly for the team. And that's everything from energy management targets to yeah, all how sorts. the car performs and even corner to corner. Yeah, yeah, Love it. yeah. Love you it. can change, yeah, you can change how uh, you can adapt the car uh, corner by corner you can have different zones so if I want more engine braking in one place I can change that live on the track. Two brake balance offset if you need to. Yep, copy. So can you give me can you give me an idea on how many things can be tweaked within the simulator software? Ultimately between the simulator and our controls there's hundreds, thousands of parameters really. Right. Uh, in terms of simulator itself and the circuits we're going to uh, yes, uh, things like the bumpiness of the circuit, the altitude of the circuit, uh, the grip levels, the tyres is a huge one, a uh, huge factor. So that's multifaceted, uh, depending on where, on temperature, on, on, on several different factors. So uh, yeah, there's a multitude of uh, different aspects that we need to, to tune together to get the best result. So what I'm sort of starting to learn, or so really starting to understand better, is that the simulator really isn't for Dan and Sergio. It's, it's an element of that where they get used to the track, but really it's about providing the team and the engineers with all that data to be able to perfect those strategies and get energy management in a good place. Exactly. Uh, yes, there's an element for the driver, but I'd say maybe that's 20% of the day, and the other 80% is really team information to turn up in a, in a better position than we would do otherwise. 
So with all of our data being crunched and, and forming a strategy yep. of which we know 0.1 of a percent can be the difference between finishing the race or not, or yep. being on the podium or not, yes. or whatever, yeah. this simulator and all the simulators they're doing a massive job. Yeah, I do find it quite amazing that, you know, especially with the Gen 3 racing, the amount of variables that are happening in a race, like you can't obviously predict everything when you've got 21 other drivers on the grid, mm. you know, different things happen, but I always find it quite incredible that literally, you know, almost 100% of the time, every driver is crossing the line with less than, you know, 0.2 of a percent. And if they don't cross the line with 0.2 of a percent, they've yeah. done it wrong. Well, I mean, it's, it's a lot about down to the driver, but it's, you know, you need as much help from the team and, and, and the car as possible. And all of that performance, that hopeful podium at the end of the weekend or fastest lap or whatever, all starts here in the Abs simulator. Absolutely. So we're now here on site, on a racetrack. First question I want to ask you, Mike, is what has changed from the sim to now? What have you brought in? Well, we, we finished the sim work on Friday before we left, so everybody was on the plane on Monday. We get here, and the main point for us is then doing the track walk. So when we do the track walk, uh, we take various measurements. So we're measuring the GPS coordinates so we confirm our simulator model. Uh, we take grip measurements so we confirm what we've seen in previous years. We confirm the assumptions we've made on the, the simulations. Uh, and we look for any changes on the track. So for example, this year, turn 15, 16, it's been resurfaced uh, and it's, it's a new concrete, it's quite slippery, so that is different to our sim model, so we need to take that into account and uh, adjust the systems accordingly for that. So there was a little bit of difference between the data you had in the sim and the real life data? Yeah, it, it happens quite often when they do some resurfacing, it's hard to know what to expect, and it evolves over the weekend, so when you arrive, if it's a fresh surface, it's quite dusty maybe to start with, yeah. and that cleans up and evolves, so you have to evolve with that and, and change your settings accordingly. So the first time the cars go out on track on any race weekend is of course the shakedown session. What did you learn from it? How did it correlate to the, all the simulator prep? So this shakedown session, the track was particularly dirty this time. We have seen it in previous years, so we, we know to expect it. Uh, we had a little bit of difficult session this time. We had, a, we had a crash with Sergio, but he had completed his flying lap and it was P3. So that actually did give us some good uh, reference data. And really, we use that to confirm the grip levels that we've been assuming. Uh, we expect them to be low, but uh, we, we know they'll evolve over the weekend. So it really to give us our start point. I'm curious to ask, because of the role that the simulator has within teams in Formula E, where would yourself or any team be without the simulator at this point? Without the simulator would be extremely difficult. Uh, for practice for the, for the push laps, so qualifying practice, uh, less important, but for the energy management, it would be a big, big problem. Uh, we've had weekends before where we've had no energy management laps in practice, maybe due to rain, so we have to be in a position that we could go straight to the race if necessary, and that all relies on the simulator, so it's crucial. The one question I want to add is, the feeling within the team, the difference between the kind of, I guess the comfortability of being at base at home in the simulator and now it all kind of matters here on site with all your competitors next to you in the paddock. I think the better sim work that you do, the more comfortable and relaxed everybody is here. So it takes the pressure off people and there's a frees up the capacity to make better decisions when the pressure's on live in the sessions. So at this point, everything possible has been done in the simulator up to now. The simulator might still be used during the race, is that right, qualifying? Yeah, we will use the simulator during the weekend uh, if there's you know, a tweak to a system or we'll always prove it out in the simulator before we run it on track and uh, make sure there's not going to be any issues. The sessions are so short you can't afford any problems, so it's a really useful tool for, for doing that. If all that work in the simulator comes into fruition, Exactly. does it work on the racetrack? Exactly. 